Um, he is Mr. Ryan Johnson, and he has a desire to understand how the human body works, and it, which enabled him to pursue a career in physiotherapy. After graduating from the University of Hertfordshire and devoting his time to studying the human anatomy, he concluded that simple solutions was missing in his practice. His passion propelled him into a career focused on muscle and joint problems. Furthermore, to provide his clients with optimal recovery, Ryan went on to train and qualify in various treatment techniques, including acupuncture, spinal manipulation, nutrition, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Ryan's experiences have led him to develop his own brand and company, R3 Physiotherapy, where the logic has been put back into physiotherapy. This has successfully helped thousands of patients recover at an outstanding rate, and he continues to dedicate his time as a practitioner throughout the UK, helping those in need of his services, leaving them feeling resilient, revitalized, and relieved. There are our three R's, right? Resilient, <laughs> yes. revitalized, and relieved. Uh, please help me welcome Mr. Ryan Johnson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anike. Um, as Anike said, um, that was my background. Um, and also, I did do some voluntary work in the Mandeville Hospital as well. And I did do, uh, I did go to sportings as well. So um, just to help out uh, the natives there, um, or the locals there. So what I wanted to do is to actually talk about back pain because everyone, uh, everyone, Kind of just a little bit more understanding of back pain. Um, so I just wanted to give my little um, overview of what back pain is and uh, the different uh, varieties of back pain and what it comes with. Um, but again, time's running, so I'm going to try to briefly go through it well, uh, as being concise as possible. So the aims of this... Um, is for you to basically have a understanding of back pain and some of the names that relates to it, um, the possible causes of uh, how you got lower back pain, and some of the strategies that you can do to prevent back pain from occurring. All right. Okay. So who does it affect? So normally they say that bet between, especially in the UK, between sixty to eighty-five percent of people will get back pain sometime in their life. Um, it could be um, once, twice, and it could be reoccurring. The common age generally is between 40 and 60, but that doesn't necessarily mean if you're 20, you won't have it, or if you're older than that, you will not have it. Um, this is just kind of the average. I have, seen, I have seen the youngest was something like 15 that had lower back pain. So, you know, and um, I am consistently seeing that the younger generations are complaining of lower back pain more than the older ones. Um, so, yeah, basically it can, it can affect anyone. Um, but there are different types, or I would say there's a different um, uh, periods of time that it can come. So, for example... Um, there's two main types, which is acute, which means that, for example, you have back pain today and it will go away tomorrow or go away in two weeks. That's the first type of back pain. So we call that kind of acute. This is where within six weeks, you can just do normal activities and it will go by itself. But then you got the, th the, the main one, which we're all kind of worried about, which is the persistent one. It's normally was it was named uh, chronic, but chronic they changed the name to persistent because chronic sounds really bad, and whenever you put something bad into your mind, you uh, it calls you to catastrophize or catastrophize, which means it just makes you think about it too much. So that's why we say it's persistent instead of chronic. So persistent, we normally say that it, it lasts for more than three months. So you would have back pain from the onset and it continuously um, uh, happened for over three months. And that's when we will say it's persistent. And this normally affects uh, around about 45% of the population. So when people have it, the first onset, sometimes it will go, but then 
sometimes it could stay and we normally see that it's around about 45 percent of people normally have it staying for more than three months next slide please right so this is just a little diagram of the back so it's, it's very complex and we're trying to simplify something that's um, extremely complex because there's so many things that um, is uh, around the back so here you got your um, you got the bones so there's five main bones so normally we call the lower back the lumbar region um, uh, because that's just its name its Greek name so um, and normally we it's from L1 to L5 the sacrum the lower part here after the lowest look there's a big bone here which is called the sacrum um i'm not too sure if you can see my mouse but if you can't i will need the mouse person to go around the lower part of the body surround so there that's called the sacrum but the the vertebrae as you can see there there's one two three vertebrae this is um, part of the lower back, right? So this is the L3 uh, vertebrae, L4 and then L5. And then the one that's lower down will be the sacrum. So that can be part of the lower back, but if we're only looking at the lumbar region, it's normally L1 to L5. Now that's the bones. So in between the bones, you've got the discs. So this is what we've always heard about, you know, the disc of, I've got um, a disc bulge, a disc prolapse. These are the discs, these are the spongy parts in between the bones. Now this actually represents 25% of your height. Now, as you, uh, if you can imagine, you know when you're younger, between the ages of 20, you, you really, you, you're, you're um, quite tall. And as you increase in age, you get smaller. And there's a reason for that, because this part in between the two bones, so in between the vertebrae is the discs. And as I said, it represents 25% of your height. Now, as you get older, what happens is this disc material starts to reduce and it actually flattens out and the two bones comes together, which means that most of your height is going to reduce. And that's the reason why you see people uh, get smaller as they grow older. So you also got um, uh, another joint here. So this is the facet joint. So this is another part of your back that is not, doesn't really have, uh, nor really knows about it too much. So this part of the back actually helps with movement, especially with twisting and turning. So this is another crucial element of your back, but again, something can go wrong here, which can cause back pain. You've got the ligaments that connect the two, um, you've got the ligaments around the back that surrounds the whole um, lower part of the back. And that just basically allows for more stability. And then you've got the most important thing, um, it, which is the spinal cord. So that goes right in the middle of your back. So there's like a little uh, hole where the spinal cord goes down and supplies some of the areas around the body. So it supplies the legs um, and supplies, it supplies the feet as well. So it gives some... Um, feelings to the feet and such so around this as well you also got the muscles and there's so many there's loads of muscles that are around the lower back that help support it and i will go through some of them um later on down in the slides but this is just an, an overview of what the lower back looks like and how complex it can be but this is just to make, simplify it all right so we've got the five bones we've got the disc We've got the nerves, the spinal nerves, we've got the muscles, and we've got the ligaments, all right? And obviously, we've got the joints. So if we can go to the next slide. Now, um, lower back pain can break up into many different categories. And what I mean by that, I mean, is that someone can be feeling lower back pains and have different signs and symptoms for the lower back pain. Now, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to explore all the, the, the main um, or the most common types of lower back pain. So the first one that I'm going to explain is uh, 
one that is I call the age spine. So this is something that everyone has. The normal name for it is lumbar um, spondylosis. So all it just means is arthritis in the back. And everyone gets scared of this word arthritis. Please do not get scared. It's just the normal aging process of what the body does. And the body is remarkable. What it does, it gives more protection to your back. So I would want you to see arthritis as more protection. So if you can see the healthy spine, you've got the nice, um, you've got the, uh, the vertebrae or the bones, and then you've got the disc, and it's nice and smooth. But when you see the um, osteoarthritic spine, you've got little lumps in between, and you can, as you can see, the disc space is, has um, reduced. So all this means is that as we grow older, generally our body gets weaker because we don't really pay we uh, we, we don't really pay attention to our body or also we don't uh, we don't um work out as much or strengthen our body as needed as we was when we were younger it's easier to grow a lot of muscle when you're younger instead of when you're older it's, it's a lot more difficult and you have to be really consistent if you really want to build uh, muscle especially when you're older so what the body does, it creates, um, it helps you out. So what it does, it, it creates more bone because the body knows that if we have more bone, we are theoretically more supported. So that's what the body does. As I said, it's remarkable. But by giving you more bone, what it does, it, it causes you to be more stiff. And that's a, another thing that can cause you pain because most, the, the more stiffer we are, the less movement we have. The less movement we have, the weaker we get. The weaker we get, the bone grows. And it's just a vicious cycle until the point where your body gets really, really stiff and you can't move. And that, that, uh, the, the reduction of movement causes the pain. So this is one thing that we have to kind of um, watch out for. The, the, the kind of telltale signs for this would be, um, I'm just so stiff. You know, when I wake up first thing in the morning, it's just so hard to get out of bed, you know? But if I, if I keep moving, if I keep walking, I feel a lot better because you're getting more movement. So this is one of the things that we just have to watch out for. for um, uh, I'll call this the age spine or the technical name is lumbar um, spondylosis. So if we go to the next slide. I mean, I'm being conscious of time. Right, Got 20 minutes. Right. So the next one is um, spinal stenosis, and I will call this the narrow spine. So as we uh, before, when we when I was speaking about the diagram of of our, our lower back, we have a um, a spinal cord. Now, um, as the spinal cord goes down to the regions of the L4, L5, um, L3, L4, L5, the spinal cord gets thicker. It actually gets bigger. And the space gets smaller. Now, as you can see, this is where the spinal canal is. So the spinal canal just means uh, um, an opening of where the spinal column goes down, right? Now, in between this, you can see a nice space a big space with the normal one. When you've got the spinal stenosis, that means there's less space for the spine to breathe, the spinal cord to breathe, which means that the spinal cord has now been coming uh, compressed. Um, and it's the same kind of thing of the arthritic spine. Instead of it being on the outside, it's actually going into the inside. Um, typically, you will see this of a person probably of age of uh, 17 and above, and the typical signs is that it normally affects their legs. They always complain of standing, things that are um, um, upright. So if you're standing, you will normally get pains going down the legs uh, or pain in the lower back uh, or leaning backwards. These are the telltale signs to know about spinal stenosis. And it's just because of that area in the, in the, in the, in the, in the canal or in the opening, it's just getting reduced. Um, 
Um, but there are kind of techniques to help this, which I'll go on uh, later down the line. So this is spinal stenosis. So if we go to the next slide, please. Right, so we've got the disc bulge. So everyone heard of a uh, disc bulge. Um, the, the technical name is a disc herniation. All it basically means is that the, in the back, there, has, there is um, a weakness. I just want you to imagine a weakness, right? Now, where you see the normal and then you see the herniated, right? This is where the disc area has become very weak and it's allowed to protrude. So it's allowed to go back and hit one of the spinal nerves. Um, and this, was, this can cause you pain. Now, generally, or typically, it can affect you when you're bending forwards because as you bend forwards, the disc goes backwards. So the more you bend forwards, the more the disc will go backwards, the more the disc will hurt the, the nerve. And then that can then send pain down the leg or into the back, all right? Also, when you're sitting, this can also cause you pain. The reason being is because, as I said earlier, um, the discs are nice and spongy. Um, and the discs like movement, but the disc doesn't like compression. Now, um, there's loads of disc compression. Uh, no, okay. There's loads of ways that disc can be compressed. One of the ways um, is by sitting. Now, there's been loads of studies on how, uh, what's the worst disc pressure, right? So what is the worst way that the disc can be compressed? Now, lying down on your back is the lowest form of uh, disc pressures. So it's the lowest form that the disc can be compressed. Sitting is probably one of the worst. It's, I think it's, it's right about fourth. So when you sit, your spine, your, your two bones come together and they squash the discs. And the more the squash, the more all the disc material um, uh, becomes reduced and, and it causes the two bones to come together. Now, this can obviously hurt the nerve and cause you pain. So that's why if you are experiencing some of these kind of symptoms, especially when you're sitting down, it's best advised to actually stand up and walk around um, just because of this. Uh, this could also affect the legs. Reason being is because each nerve, um, each nerve supplies or relates to a certain area in your body. So for example, the L2 nerve will be the thigh. The L3 will be the thigh. The L4 nerve will be the lower leg and the L5 will be the, the, the big toe. So each spinal nerve represents somewhere in your body. Now, if you're having a disc herniation in one of the areas, you can start feeling pain in the back as well as shooting down into the lower parts of your, uh, of your legs. Um, but I will, again, go on to certain things that you can do to um, help this. All right, next slide, please. So we've got the facet as well. So as I was saying, there's, there's um, another joint in your back, which is at the side. Now this joint is, um, no one really knows about this joint, but this joint is very important. It's important in loads of different things. It's important of weight um, load bearing or weight bearing, as well as moving, twisting side to side, or turning side to side. So the thing that helps you turn left and right, this is the facet that's doing it. Now, what can happen is, as you can see, the normal facet is nice and smooth. They're gliding joints. They like to glide. Yeah, back. Um, they like to glide. Now, if you see the other picture where it says the arthritic uh, degenerative joint, this is basically where, again, osteoarthritis has come in, and it's starting to affect these joints. What also could happen is actually there is a, a control issue where one of the muscles are not controlling this area very well and it's actually causing one of the nerves to be pinched. And one of the telltale signs for this kind of thing is basically if you're turning and twisting and you get a sharp pain going down the legs, 
this is where you have a, fac a facet joint problem. Or if you're bending backwards, you will have, and you're getting that pain. This is another telltale sign to say that you have a facet joint problem. Um, but again, I will go through some of the things that you can do to, to help this. So this is one of the other ones. Uh, can you, next slide please. Now this is a very important slide. And the reason being is because this is a called acquired, it's called called acquired syndrome. And I will say this is a medical emergency. Now this is very rare. I'm going to, I'm going to repeat again. This is very rare. Less than 1% of the population will ever go through this. So if you have back pain, it doesn't necessarily mean that you get this quarter quina. It's very, very, very rare. But as a physio, I have to say this because it does happen at times. Now, um, this is where, if you remember, uh, we're talking about the disc bulge. Now, sometimes the disc bulge goes out to the side or sometimes the disc, disc bulge goes back right in the middle. Now, when it goes right in the middle, that means it can affect both sides at the same time. And what it can do is uh, recompress the spinal cord. Now, when it compresses the spinal cord centrally, which means right in the middle, that means it can affect um, both sides of your body. But not only that, it can actually affect your balance and it can affect um, uh, you going to the toilet. So one of the telltale signs is literally if you're in constant pain where no position, it gets better. You're getting this pins and needles, numbness um, down both legs, it's shooting down. Um, also, you're, the, uh, I would say the main sign that you really have to watch out for is a loss of bladder and bowel, uh, a loss of control of your bladder and bowel. So, you know, for example, if you're going to the toilet, um, and you can't, you, you know, you haven't, you haven't a lot of difficulties going or the opposite is where, you know, you're walking along and, you know, you've had an accident. These are the telltale signs. Also, um, a loss of sensation around the inner thigh and the pelvic region. So if you're going to the toilet and, you know, you're wiping yourself and you cannot feel the tissue at all, that's another telltale sign that, you know, this is, this is a problem along with all the other signs um and another sign which i actually picked up on as well um in in practice is the inability to balance so for example when you're walking you have this um we call it a wide a wide gate so basically imagine that your legs are uh completely outwards and you're trying to find um, support in every time you walk. So it'll be one of the people that, you know, they, they have to use a rail to walk anywhere they go. This is one of the telltale signs. You don't have any balance at all. Your balance is gone completely. So, um, but as I said already, this is a rare uh, diagnosis. I wouldn't be too worried about it. But if you do have any of these signs, you have to either call, I would say go to straight, eight, uh, straight to AD, um, go, to, uh, go to AD straight away and just basically tell them this is kind of the thing that you're experiencing. Just, just tell them your signs um, that you're experiencing and then they'll be able to, you know, what them right and make sure that, you know, um, this is what it is and then, yeah, it is a um, an operation for this procedure because one of the risks are that you know you will lose all of the sensations around that area, and um, so they want to catch it very early. Um, next slide, please. Now, so you're probably thinking, all right? So how does this all happen? How do I then get back pain? You know, one day I was fine. And the next morning, you know, I wake up and I'm getting this little pain. And now this pain has become pers persistent. And now I cannot get rid of it. You know, I'm taking all these medications and it helping. Now, some of the things um, uh, can contribute to lower back pain. Um, one of the things that I've always seen is 
incorrect lifting. And this doesn't mean something heavy. That just means just the way you're doing it. So, for example, lifting is a whole body exercise. Don't forget, our body is just not our backs. Our body you know, consists of our knees, ankles, hips, backs, necks, shoulders, whatever it may have you. So one thing we do is actually abuse our backs. We make our backs do more than it's designed to do. So when I'm saying incorrect lifting, you could be lifting the pen and you're leaning over, as you can see, the arch. Because when you're leaning over and you see that arch, what that does is put a significant amount of pressure on the back. And um, uh, this can cause, you know, disc bulges or this can actually cause a, a lot of pressure. And once you have a lot of pressure, pressure can amount to pain. And it's the... Re repetition of keeping doing these kind of activities that can cause uh, 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 to be irritated. And that irritation can lead on to something persistent. So one of the things that I found is definitely, whoops, um, uh, incorrect lifting. Uh, falling is another thing as well. So any um, falls that are potential uh, that can you know, cause any fractures or anything like that. Because again, fractures affect the ability to move. And the ability to move will cause stiffness. Stiffness then will cause pain. And another thing as well, lifestyle traits. I think... Is that again? Hello? Oh. Uh, lifestyle traits again. Um, you know, sedentary lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle, um, you know, a lot of sitting. And I think even the nutritionist said, you know, some things that you need to do, um, uh, you know, the processed foods, all of these things that actually affect our muscles, you know, uh, it affects our heart, it affects uh, the ability to make muscles. Uh, so all of these things can affect the way how we move and then obviously affect the pain that we get from it. Next slide, please. Right, so how do we take back control? So one of the main important things is adaptations. So if you know you're doing something repeatedly over and over again, and you always feel that, oh, my back pain, it feels achy, then try and do something differently or trying to find another way of doing that same activity. For example, if you're now bending with your back, bend with your knees, bend with your hips, get your whole body involved in this uh, in this activity also um you know if you're sitting down for too long you know normally we say every half an hour get up for 10 minutes walk around or every hour if you can get up walk around even sit in posture as well change uh those things so you know sl uh, slouching um and all of those things just try to modify those and see how your back feels also awareness of your body uh, making sure that you kind of understand your body. When was the last time we, you know, we done a balancing exercise? When was the last time we actually thought what we what we was doing? So it's being more aware of what we're doing and, and especially in how we're doing it as well. And also, we can never forget specific exercises. So specific exercises normally involve these these muscles, which is the bottom muscles, one of the most the largest muscle and one of the most important muscles in your body. This muscle has a direct attachment to your back. The stronger this muscle is, the stronger your back is. Your back is never the thing to blame. It's always the things surrounding it, especially the hip region. So the stronger the muscles you, heart, you have in your hips, the better it is. Also, trans abs. This muscle gets annoyed. We always... Uh, uh, um, Ignored. We always think about the six pack muscle, but actually it's the one that's deepest down. So this is called the transverse abdominis. This is the one that really supports your back. And it has a loads of um, connection to your diaphragm as well. So breathing as well can help with lower back pain. And leg muscles as well. The thigh, the quads, quad muscles, the thigh muscles are the strongest muscles in your body. So getting this muscle stronger actually helps with lower back pain. Next slide, please. But what this all means? Now, we want an exercise. So once we do the specific exercises, we actually want an exercise that can always strengthen, uh, strengthen our body while we're on the move. 
So we don't need to go to the gym or anything like that. Why can't we um, walk and strengthen at the same time? And that's why I always say walking is one of the best exercises given. Number one, it's a low impact exercise. So it doesn't really um, affect your joints such as running or jumping or squatting and stuff like that, or jump squats. Uh, two, it's actually a really good exercise to work the whole body out. It, every step that you take is normally 200 muscles. So you're, what, if you're walking, the, um, there's always ways to work efficiently. So when was the last time we thought about walking with our big toe, using our big toe? When was the last time we actually walked while we squeeze our bottom while we're walking or turn our hips when, or um, move our arms when we're walking, swinging our arms? Um, all these things um, come with walking. And the more efficiently we walk, the better it is to help to support our back and strengthen as we walk. Um, and as you know, walking has a variety of benefits. It helps mood. It helps cardiovascular. So it helps your heart and lungs. It helps, um, it helps you to stay fit. It helps weight management. There's so many benefits from walking. So, um, as I said, sorry, this was a, a, a quick overview of the lower back and, um, uh, and um, the things that caused it and um, things that we can do to prevent it. If you'd like more information, you can go to my website. I have loads of blogs. I've had, uh, there is loads of things um, regarding back pain, but more specifically, how to actually get yourself um, feeling much better, or as we say, resilient, revitalized, relieved.